couple of days. U.S. home sales data for January is due out later on today. Has the bad weather had an impact on the numbers? We always seem to be talking about the bad weather impact. Uh, Sherry Olofsson is a U.S. real estate attorney. She joins us now live from Florida. Sherry, what are you anticipating for the data itself? How strong or how weak do you anticipate the existing home sales data will be? And what about the weather impact? Sure. U.S. home sales will definitely be down, Louisa, and in part due to the cold weather, but more importantly due to cold hard facts. I mean, the pending sales numbers have been down by maybe eight or nine percent in the last month or so. You can't have actual sales without pending sales, which of course uh, are the measures two or three months out before those sales actually occur. That's the measure of contract signed. Uh, U.S. mortgage home loan applications are also down over six percent. It's difficult to have actual sales without applications uh, and loans. And this is part of a bigger trend. We saw actual existing sales in the U.S. market not tanking last month, but certainly growing at a, at a much smaller rate, maybe about 1 percent. Uh, and now we're talking more about hitting the top of the market. A few years ago, it was about where's the bottom. Now it's really about where's the top. There are some temporary reasons for these slowdowns, but also some more uh, troubling and persistent ones. Um, how would you compare the market when looking at it in, in buyers versus sellers terms? From a seller's standpoint, we've definitely had a seller's market. Uh, we know that there have been huge numbers of investors buying these homes, and of course that's driven by rentals. They're buying them to flip and turn into residential rental properties. Uh, but as the rents are increasing, incomes are not keeping up with that. We're also expecting less appreciation in prices this year. We've seen two years of double-digit appreciation. Now it'll probably be more in the line of four or five percent. So there may be a chance that those investors are going to go seek yield uh, elsewhere and not compete quite as much with those buyers which eventually will uh, add to increased inventory. We're only at about four and a half months now right now, which is, is low. I mean, we're used to having about six months worth of inventory. So it's been difficult from a buyer's perspective, but we're definitely moving at an important juncture here, Louisa, from a seller's market for the past two years into a buyer's market. Um, the sharp mortgage rate rises that we've seen over the last couple of months, how, mu how much of an impact has that had on the market and has it, has it properly fed through yet? It hasn't been significant because still those rates are at historic lows. The bigger impact, Louisa, has been with the beginning of the qualified mortgage rules under uh, the Dodd-Frank Act, which started January 10th. Almost 20 percent of home buyers who would have qualified for a mortgage before will not qualify under those rules, primarily because that debt-to-income ratio can't exceed 43 percent, and wages in the U.S. have just not kept up with home prices, which is probably the biggest, most persistent problem we have. We're also looking at reforming uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac this year, and Congress is considering more comprehensive tax reforms. If they go and really look at the mortgage interest deduction and some of the incentives for home buyers to own in the U.S., that could have a significant impact as well. Sherry, thank you very much uh, for being with us. Uh, have a good day. Sherry Olofsson uh, joining us from Fort Lauderdale in Florida.